You ready? There is a connection between the paranormal, UFOs, and the myths of ancient history. The clues are scattered across the landscape from a forbidden past, maybe even in your own backyard. There is a connection between the true nature of our reality, consciousness, and the unexplained. I'm Carl the Crusher. Let's explore the unknown. What's up, guys? Today is going to be an interesting day because I'm headed up to a place that many of you may not actually know about. Before Skinwalker Ranch, there was another location that was researched heavily for exactly the same reasons. And it's actually closer to where I live. It's only about two hours away. And so right now what I'm doing is I'm actually deciding what gear I'm going to pack up to take up to this place because I've never been there before. But there's been reports of everything from paranormal encounters, UFO sightings, uh, mysterious research being done on the property. And it was done uh, by the same people that researched Skinwalker Ranch right before they bought the property at Skinwalker Ranch. There you have it. I was able to get everything, all of my gear compartmentalized and packed away into that one backpack, except for the big metal detector and you know, my filming tripod and stuff, but ready to hit the road. I get asked a lot like what equipment I use and, and recommendations and all that. So make sure and subscribe and turn on notifications because I'm going to be using it all in the next 48 hours over this whole series. And I'll show you exactly how I use it and what I use it for. I got to be honest with you. I have no idea what to expect. So I got to go in there open minded. Anything from the paranormal, you know, there could be shadow figures, ghosts. There could be interaction with this shaman character. What if I have nightmares up there or something like that? Uh, I don't know. What if we find more petroglyphs or interesting stuff? There's a lot to do. So we just got to load up and get up there and see what we find. Before Skinwalker Ranch, there was this location that was owned by Bob Bigelow and heavily researched. And the rumor is that a lot of the stories that supposedly come from Skinwalker Ranch, some of them may come from this location instead of up there in Utah. This place is actually in Nevada, a lot closer to where I live in Southern Utah. And the stories are just as interesting as the ones up in the Uinta Basin. So I'm excited to go find out and stay there overnight, see for myself. I don't know why I'm not surprised, but we're actually driving pretty close to Area 51. I don't know about you, but I was unaware that Bigelow actually owned property and did research in a place before Skinwalker Ranch. I didn't even know that this place existed until the family contacted me and said there's more to the story than people know and invited me to come and check it out. So I'm getting really close now to pulling up on the property. We're gonna see it for the first time now. <laughs> now that I pulled the camera out, everybody's getting camera shy. <laughs> We're actually up here, this is Jeff. Hi, Jeff. Hello there. And he is owner and manager here of Mountain Wilson Ranch. And this place you're saying was actually bought at the same time as Skinwalker Ranch, is that right? Yes. Okay, so we're gonna learn all about that. We're gonna start walking around and taking a whole tour. You're gonna get the whole backstory and the full truth right now. I had no idea that this place even existed, but check it out. It's like an actual old saloon, a hotel a motel clear up on the mountains. And if you don't know, this place right here should look familiar to you. I'm gonna show you a photo in a minute that actually proves that this location is legitimately associated with Skinwalker Ranch and all the research down there. Okay, this is cool. So everybody's gonna be just super fascinated. So I'm literally just gonna film all of this as we go. But this is awesome. This is like a hotel, or what was the original purpose of this place? Uh, this guy had a dream to get people out to the woods, bring them out, show them some history, kind of like uh, cabins in the woods, but hotel style. Right. That's crazy. So how did in the world did like uh, Bigelow end up out here? Because like, like there's aliens already. Apparently, during the MX missile program. There were a lot of 
researchers out here. And those researchers were government researchers. And hey guys. Bigelow wound up knowing those guys down in the future. Is this a restaurant or what is this place? <laughs> are you kidding me? What? <laughs> These guys are here waiting for their meal. You guys have they're, ordered they're some food for, already? They're waiting for their pork roll. <laughs> How's it going? So yeah. I hear that this place is full of all kinds of weird stories, paranormal stories, UFO sightings. So I'm here with like locals and the owners and I just want to ask on the fly what you guys think of that. Does that seem legitimate? There's a lot, there's a lot of unidentified things happening in the sky around here. Yeah. Like that. Is it really? Oh, yeah. Have you seen some stuff too? Yeah. Everybody has? I've heard stories and rumors of people, sightings of like a, of a shaman. Is that true? So this guy tell you, he used to work at the test site. You did? Yeah. You worked at the test site? Yeah. Okay, so we might have to pick some brains and do some interviews up here to find out the, the full story. Lot, but... You can't say a lot. <laughs> yeah, I don't either. <laughs> we'll see. So our kitchen? The kitchen up here. When was this place actually built, do you know? It's an original homestead, so 1840s, 1850s really? was when it really started getting going. But then uh, in the 60s, they got this building going. It's actually like a ghost town map. You'd be amazed at how many. There's over 350 ghost towns in Nevada. That doesn't surprise me. Any ghost stories in this place since it's built back oh, then? Oh yeah, every every room has a story for sure. Really? Oh yes. Oh gosh. You know, okay. We've heard them from families every different family that's come through and yeah. So I'm going to be staying in a particular motel room here and you're saying that this motel room I'm going to be staying in has a lot of stories with it too or? It would be called our most famous room. Um, we don't privy people up to what that room is about for the most part. So we get a lot of strange stories in the morning. So you just want to wait and see what happens with me? Yeah, because. Okay. Myself and Knickknack, we aren't privy to that. Okay. We don't get exposed. It to doesn't that. happen we've, to you. We've heard from people that were blockheads. Well, I'm a blockhead. <laughs> okay. And apparently, I don't allow this to go through. But gotcha. Some people that just naturally have it, they tell us some cool stories in the morning. So this mirror over here. Yeah. I actually hear that a lot. There's mirrors in particular. Look. Oh, there's. Two, so it's like an infinity mirror thing going. Yeah, okay. So I'm gonna be staying in a in a in a room and they're not telling me or warning me what's gonna happen, but they think I'm sensitive and so stuff's gonna happen. We'll find out. I brought my paranormal investigating equipment and we'll find out. And maybe if I can even spend some time tonight over here. Absolutely. Check out the mirrors. Uh it could be an interesting night. I, I didn't realize I was signing up for this tonight, but <laughs> that's okay. I'm prepared. I'm prepared. I mean, I'm not going to lie. This place is really cool, but it does give off haunted vibes. <laughs> it really does, right? <laughs> like, it is so cool. But wow, this is awesome, man. This is so cool. Look at this place. I mean, if there was ever a place where I could see that uh, was owned at the same time as Skinwalker Ranch and had just as many stories, if not more, like what the heck, dude, look at this place. <laughs> this was built when? Like 1800s, you said, or? No, no, no? This, so this back bar was built in like 1840, 1850. Wow. In Europe. Really? And this is the fourth stop for the saloon. Holy smokes. The last place it was located was Redding, California. And when it left Redding, uh, the gentleman that brought it from Redding to Nevada built all of this to house that. Wow. This is amazing. All hand built. And that's authentic with the cobwebs. It looks good. Oh, this place is wild. Wow. Beautiful, beautiful, beautiful. I don't get any negative vibes here. It just feels like old 
and uh, mysterious. <laughs> you know, every haunted saloon has to have an old creaky piano, right? <laughs> Fitting. <laughs> we'll mess around with that. Jeff, you said that there were there's some uh, experiences that have been had right here in the saloon. Oh, one of our most famous, myself and Nick Neck, were behind a bar here, and we had two gentlemen sitting here. And one gentleman takes a look into the mirror, and he says he sees a couple up there staring down at him. Really? So he's like sitting right here like I am, and then he sees... Up into that mirror, and then people sitting right up in those that table right there. Really? And he about blew through that door as fast as you can go out. What is those? Really? So oh, he yeah. saw people sitting up there even though there was no one there. Yeah, so that's the whole thing is the idea that these interesting places and why Bigelow and the government is so interested is that they have dimensional time warps or portals that open to places in the past or the future or other dimensions. So that's yeah. the whole... Ooh. That's the whole question. That sounds like uh, right on the head. <laughs> right on the head, right? Yep. Well, maybe we'll have to come and sit here tonight, too, and see what we see, ask some questions. We'll have a drink. We'll have a drink. So we'll sit here tonight and see if we see anybody up there. You say there's another sighting in the corner up there? That corner over there is a strange little access to a room back there. Up at the top of the stairs? Yeah. Oh. Dogs, pets. They see little kids, dogs, and stuff? Stare. Stare up into that corner. Like they think they see something? Yeah. Really? Wait, up here? Oh yeah, where that's walled off. There you go. Uh, yeah, okay. This bathroom here? Yes. And Cowboy there's some bathroom. Uh, she said just something, something bad. Something not, yeah. Something very bad. She just sensed some kind of a bad energy? Yeah. Like... Had she eaten something earlier and then tried, went in the wrong restroom? Or <laughs> no, just kidding. <laughs> into the into this cowboy bathroom, huh? Oh, it does have a weird vibe to it. I was joking around and I stepped in here and it was really funny. Intuition got a really funny feeling too. Well, I was joking around and my intuition got a weird feeling when I went in there too, I'm not gonna lie. A lot of unknowns. Yeah. There's a lot of unknowns. We'll poke around at them and see what we find. Okay, so before Bigelow, there was a previous property owner? The Alfanos. The Alfanos, okay. And tell me about them. They were, were they Native American family? Um, or? Unsure if they had Native in their family ancestry. She made these though? But she, yeah, and that would put her that she was native because those are made by native people. So partial. So she, oh, she, she wasn't full blood Native American. Okay. But she made those Kachina dolls and she actually like lived here then. She lived on the ranch up until probably 87. And then she moved onto her own property up here on the Mount Wilson. She passed away about three years ago, but she had major history of this place. You know, from alien interactions. Um, the shaman? The shaman, yeah. Really? Oh yeah, she had a lot of, I mean, I, I wish she was along around to tell that story. Wow. But she had interactions, and they were all Native American themed as well. Then Native, no, there was actually uh, oh, she you had said interactions with aliens. Aliens, uh, okay. She yeah. called it the patriarch. Really, and the two that were alongside of the patriarch that she actually encountered. So there was uh, a larger figure, and then two smaller ones that came with the shaman. Yes, no, with the in, with the aliens or with the aliens. Yeah, we're talking the aliens now. So it was a patriarch alien and two little ones with it, as she explained. Did she describe what they look like or anything? I'm just curious uh, if it fits we... the petroglyphs I've seen. Ah, uh, gray. They were of gray in color. Really? Maybe blue, but gray. You, and, and, and the only reason I know that is because I saw her paperwork when she was going to get interviewed for um, the Ghost Adventure show. Oh, really? Yeah. And, and she and told and the and story. And, and, I, and I, oh, yeah. we got to see all of her paperwork, but we never got to keep it. Really? And then she died. 
She got sick right before that show. Couldn't talk about it on that show. And, and all that paperwork is with the show now? Yep. Oh, wow. Yep. But she, do you know where she saw the shaman or where that happened? Oh, the shaman, Every almost every time that there was shaman encounters was in the end hotel room in the main Oh, room. that's where you're making me sleep tonight. <laughs> you, you, I see what's going on here. Okay, okay. You were gonna test it. <laughs> that's right, okay. <laughs> that's good, that's perfect. I'm a shaman bait. That's what these guys are doing to me. They invited me up here to feed me to the shaman ghost. <laughs> no, you have a connection I'm just now. kidding. No. no, this is cool. This is really cool. The actual, the story, the oral tradition of the place and everything, and where I'm going to be staying tonight, it's all very interesting. Especially that this place was actually purchased and researched right alongside Skinwalker Ranch, and nobody knows about it. This whole place is just full of old, cool stuff. Wow, another old piano. <laughs> Donated from the local Freemason Lodge here in Pioch. Every, every time I stop recording, he's like, oh yeah, this, this is a Freemason piano. <laughs> okay, so I just should just have a camera crew follow around and film everything so I don't miss it. But yeah, we're gonna have to spend some time in this building for sure. Forbidden Science, so this is Jacques Vallée's book. All right. And so he actually talks about the ranch in this book. Oh, okay. Is this the one that has the photo in here? This is. So not many photos in this book. And the photo is of that right there where we're standing. Okay, so it says on our field survey at at Bigelow's Mountain Wilson Ranch, Nevada, with Hal Putoff and Dr. Tim Ryan from August 1996. There they are, right there. There's the building. Right there. Dude, nobody knows about this place. What the heck? What the heck? That was on purpose. It's on purpose. There's a time and a place for everything. And now's the time. Now's the time. Yeah, okay. And you haven't even started playing games out there, though. That's even no, I haven't better. started doing any experiments. I haven't researched. We haven't even left the uh, buildings or anything to go explore the ancient petroglyphs and look for artifacts or any of that. But you're saying I need to just go through this book and it has a ton of the story and how this ranch was involved in all of that. Huh? Yeah, you'll get a better understanding where and how they develop NIDs. Yeah. And all of it actually was was here, not necessarily all in Utah like they say so, right? Yeah, close to close to headquarters in Las Vegas. Yeah, that's true. Oh, ah, uh, yeah, we are. I just mentioned that on the drive up here that is, we're right by Area Fifty One, which, dude, it just gets weirder and weirder, man. So this is the northern edge, basically from here, east and west. Any further south, you're on the test site. Right. On top of this mountain is apparently a Vortac aviation tower that keeps all FAA north of this spot. Right. Everything else south is other activity in the sky. Oh, that's Herb Castle, Major Gold, as I call him. He taught us everything about gold mining. Uh, there, is there, there's ancient gold mines and modern ones and everything all over uh, here yeah. too? He's the gentleman that had me go out and check that white marker out on the mountain to see if it was a Spanish marker or not. Okay, yeah, you the, were mentioning that too, because everywhere I go, there's like this narrative of the same thing. You're close to modern uh, military facilities, Department of Energy sites, and, and government research funding, which is exactly what went on here. We're right by... Uh, the Nevada test site, Area 51, and all the areas. And then you got Skinwalker Ranch and all that. And the and MX missile program was getting ready to take off from this base, basically here. And right on top of ancient petroglyphs and oral traditions that have to do with the paranormal portals and energetic zones and weirdness, all kinds of high strangeness, ancient mines and all that stuff. So it's all the same. Spanish, the Spaniards coming in and like... Ah, oh, it's like the same story on repeat spread out over a broader spectrum than people realize, right? Right? 
I don't know. <laughs> um, this is this is this is newer land. I mean, right. Uh, I I went to school and I was taught one thing, and uh, my world is now twisted. Yeah, yeah, it is right. You know, and and again, the twisted world is absolutely more towards where I would the real world. Yeah, I agree. Yeah. I agree. So wait, you found this here on the on the ranch? Out in the properties around here. Yeah. Really? And this is authentic? Oh my word. <laughs> what is this guy? He's like, start talking, man. I'm asking questions about how you found this sword and what it is. Well, if you look at it and you see those bumps in it, that's where my quad tires went over. You it. drove over top of it? So I drove over it and we looked down to see what it was. Myself and Knickknack were on the quad. And this was sitting there. So it winds up being Wait. an Knights of the Pythias Templar sword. This is a Templar sword and you found it on this property here? Around here. Around here. Okay. Yes. Are you, okay, I don't, I'm not going to probe anymore as to where. Well, just, yeah, just around <laughs> here. But yes, and we've never unsheathed it. We don't know who's signed on it. We don't know anything really about it other than it was just sitting on the ground out here. Can we unsheath it? Oh, I would love to. Can we? That would be, yeah, let's do it. Let's, let's unsheath it, dude. Imagine, oh. imagine if it's signed by the right guy. No kidding, let's unsheath it. You guys wanna all unsheath it? <laughs> yeah. <Let's> yes. <laughs> yes. I was always afraid I'm gonna break that wood handle with the little draw saw. Now you hold up from here. Yeah, but look, even even the whole thing is kind of like yeah, it's pretty old. I'm trying to get you my see camera my bends to focus in it? properly. Yes, here you go. You maybe the, maybe let's no set it on the table, no yes. dude. I don't, I'm so scared to even yeah, touch it. <laughs> hey, help me! <laughs> Where are we? Let's set it over here on this table really quick. Oh my gosh, here I got to set it down. I got my camera. <laughs> this is crazy, man. I have somebody beat it for you, bag it. Yeah. Yeah, for sure. So, the research I've done on it so far, it sounds like it could be 1910, 1915 in that range. And it was like a ceremonial style sword. And they were all signed by somebody. So, on that blade, there should be some... A signature. And hopefully it's from like somebody like... That we cool. can identify and then we would know who came through. Exactly. Yep. Who was right. out in this spot yeah, in the middle of Nevada? <laughs> I, don't sure. so. I can't believe this man. That was funny. Yeah. So there could be a name of a of a Templar or <laughs> Oh my gosh. They were here as part of the Masonic. Yes. Okay, so you're gonna open it? You want to try to unsheath it? Go for it. Let's no, see. I'm not going to touch it. You're no, the one that found it. Hey, I found this I gotta film probably it. six, seven years ago. And I've Just lay it right over here. Do it right do here. And lay it, it. it doesn't come out, though. You can't. It's probably not going to come out easy because of that band. That's, what I, that's band. where I was at. And I wouldn't even try to dig it out. You don't think so? No, that's why I was let an expert take it out. Yeah. Uh -huh. Carl's an expert. No, not on this. <laughs> you could take away the value of that. I know. Yeah, I don't want I know. To. That's I really, why I haven't touched it. It does it's, have it's, a, you're right. It does have a bend in the blade. Yeah, that's, that was the two quad tire marks. So that's a, let's, you know, let's wait, sticks. let's wait. Oh yeah, let's not unsheath it. You know that guy that uh, Pawn Store uses, he's got that black brim hat. He yep. always wears a red shirt when he goes over and values. And he, won't, he won't do that. He does. He does old buying stuff. Okay. They'll bring in an expert that does this stuff. Yeah. They might know You'll somebody. Let me call can... a buddy of mine. He hey, I'm that. not, you know, again, it's now that we're going to bust loose into the world. Let's bust this baby open and see what the hell it does too. Same yeah. thing. There's initials on it right there. Look at that. FCB. FCB. And there's Corey. a, there's like a guy oh, and he's, it's like he's, Oh, it's like Samson, and he's knocking the pillars Say of again. Olympus down or something. No, I'm See that? Still he's like a guy thing. who's knocking the pillars over. I just haven't found that person, uh, or I haven't really looked. It'd be our luck that we would destroy, mess it up. Break it. Something. I don't want to pull the handle or break the wood right. off. That's what I was afraid of. Right. But I think right here, if we 
put something in there and just twist it, it would probably be more likely yeah, to start then, working. Then you're way. damaging, right? That's now. what I didn't want to damage any of it. Right. Mm -hmm. I was afraid, like I said, cracking that wood because that wood's old. They, they know how to go about and it. it has a nice there could be a way without even opening it to be able to scan and see if there's a name written oh, through. Oh, there he is. Like no, to x-ray through it in such a way that we don't even have to open it and see who made the sword or who owned it. That is an amazing find. Wow. We're taking a second look at this sword and we're wondering if it's not like a Masonic rites sword or ritual sword for early settlers because of the style of these screws. And you're saying that does match for it being like vintage Knights of Pythias FCB sword and scabbard fraternal ceremonial sword. And that's the same Apollo pulling down the pillars right there just different handle and it says fcb and then just different ornamental handle on there but it's a it's a knight's templar whether it's authentic or it's a reenactment for like masonic ceremonies or something that's the big question yeah, that, but on the top here yeah you have the the same they have the battle axe thing there it is right there broken off of the top it looks like something maybe. it looks like uh you have the same flathead screw there, though, as here. Yeah, is that authentic? This is the same. Because it has the the battle axe. That was the, uh, what do they call that? The, what did they call that? I can't remember. The two-sided battle axe sword had to do... Let's look at the other side of it. Ancient too. Rome, yeah. What I was searching for when I searched Is it for Apollo it. or is that Samson pulling down the pillars? What? Yeah. So, yeah, that's interesting that that was found here, too. This is all out of this book here. This is saying that Nids came to study cattle mutilations. Terry Sherman and wife. This is all talking about Skinwalker Ranch and the Shermans. This is talking about uh, Hal Putoff being seized with intense reactions and sneezing and feeling better. You turn the page and then here is Mount Wilson Ranch, Nevada, right where we're at. Piochi. So this ranch was all part of this story and nobody talks about it. Nobody has any idea that this place... So you're saying they actually did the experiments like Close Encounters of the Third Time with kind with a Jacques Vallée with light and sound. They did that uh, right up in up that in the upper meadow. Up in that canyon up there? Yes. Oh my gosh. Okay. This is so crazy. This is all right here in this book. It's even talking about how Hal put off, how they brought how they use Ingo Swan and Yuri Geller, and they were using remote viewing here and at Skinwalker Ranch to try and make contact with extraterrestrials or with another dimension. Yeah, look, look, look. There's a piano and an electric organ and a row of fine tables. There are plates of glass where all set as waiting for rough, ready miners. Counting and tantric. The ghost of a tall Native American is rumored to show up in one of the rooms. It says right there on page 329. That's the room, you guys, right there. And you're going to make, your and you're gonna make me sleep in there tonight. Oh, my gosh. Okay. So this is the motel room where the sightings of the shaman occur, where I'm going to be spending the night tonight. So it happens to be your room for tonight. Yeah. Right. That should be fun. Oh, it's actually really nice in here. It doesn't feel like creepy or haunted at all. We've themed it up, of course. Yeah. Ah, that's beautiful, man. This is great. I thought it was going to be like camping up here. Native wood, all locally made. Wow, this is so cool. So they have have experiences where people sleep in this room and then they've seen a tall shaman figure. that. Yeah, people have woke up in the middle of the night. They've had uh, doors opening, closing. The water has turned on. Uh, and then just feelings and then waking up and actually seeing figures.
seeing like a figure standing yeah, in the room. Full-blown, pretty tall of stature, Indian. Uh, shaman, from what we understand, 750-year-ago time period. Really? I'm not privy Based to Based on it. the way he's dressed or? Yeah, that was it. From the garb that he's wearing, he's... Uh, He's from 750 years ago. It's been time dated, apparently. Wow. Okay. So we're going to be staying in this, in this room tonight and walking around, checking it out. I honestly thought that I was going to be coming up here. Uh, it was going to be more like camping, hiking around, looking for petroglyphs. This is amazing. There's actually been a record of people coming up here. It's like the test site kind of expanded. They ran into this area for part of their research and found something unusual. And now this whole ranch has been built up here. At the same time a Skinwalker Ranch was being investigated, so was this. And now there's all kinds of paranormal encounters that occur right here in this room where I'm gonna be staying tonight. The next morning, my front door is banging madly at 6.30 a.m. <laughs> and it was her. And she's over there telling me, why didn't you tell me? what and she's about this indian that didn't just stay in that room apparently he was in this room too so he went from this one to, and visited that one too uh, yeah. so who knows maybe i mean you're saying there's native american artifacts all over flake sites campgrounds petroglyphs i mean Squanol is right down below Squanol us. right down there and this bizarre looking insect skin or shell just laying on the ground Hopefully there isn't giant ones of these lurking in cave systems around here, right? Like, wouldn't that be terrifying? Look at that thing. But that's just called a potato bug. They're actually harmless. We're getting a tour now of the ranch itself. How many acres is this? I mean, I see there's all kinds of buildings, old. So the entire settlements. property, the Mount Wilson Guest Ranch area is 365 acres of private land. Wow. We, I started at 145 and I'm right around 100 acres right now. Wow. Okay. So this is a big research area and you're saying there's Native American artifacts and dwelling sites like all over here. And what did you call this up here? That's, we call that the cathedral. The cathedral. Okay. Beautiful views of everything in the Mount Wilson area. Okay. Right there we have some Indian some old caves up in those that bluff sticking up right there yep. up in there yep that's the one and that whole ridge line a bunch of like uh you know squares down in the ground all cut out with rocks wow okay yeah we'll have to check all that out there's a lot to do here man from all angles from <laughs> stuff in the sky to the shaman to ghost sightings in the saloon native american artifacts a lot to do this is the old, you said this is the old settler's house? This would be the original settler's house on the property. And um, have they had any kind of experiences in here while staying in here? You just kind of told me one. Yeah, I'm trying to I, fish I, the story yeah, back out of you. The, uh, <laughs> the Craw family, basically, the, the property, Craw Creek, the saloon named after the Craw Creek right there. This was their house. Um, apparently, one of their last moments here. Everything on their kitchen table, they were all sitting at the kitchen table. Everything lifted up off the table, rose up to a point where everybody basically ran out of there as it all fell all over the table. Just like poltergeist lifted up and dropped? Yeah. Yep. Oh, wow. Okay. I've since taken the house apart. You know, it had all modern walls on it, so I've been stripping it down. Wow. And I'm, I want to get it to a, a time period point. So staying in this uh, old settler's house and doing some investigating might be worth the time too. Oh, I'd say that would probably be fun for you. Wow. Maybe man. we'll put you up in here tonight instead. <laughs> Take your pick, right? <laughs> you guys are just like using me for bait all over. Yeah. Hey, buddy. How are you Hello. doing? That's a cute That's Odie. Hey, Odie. That's the newest uh, acquisition of the ranch. Other my dog. My dad had a dog named Odie. That's so cool. Hi, Odie. People have had encounters here in the bunkhouse too. Yeah, we've heard of everything. Apparently, we had, you know, a lot of people waiting for the stagecoach that used to stop down here. Really? Yeah, and they actually still hear people standing waiting for the coach to arrive. So the stagecoach would pull up right up here on this old road. Yep. And they would, and they would come the out of here. This road is about like a mile down from here, and this was just a stopping point, a watering point. 
um, where they actually rested the horses. All right here. Watered them up. Man, see, there's just levels and levels of history that uh, definitely ripen the paranormal activity if there is any. Nice, and these are all cleaned up now too, but this building has been here for a long time then too, huh? Yeah, this is probably 50s. Wow, cool. Apparently your old army barracks was how this building started up. Really? Yeah, that, that end of the building down the end was a barrack. And again, built right on top of like historical... Something. All kinds of stuff. Levels and levels of history. Yeah, all overlapping. To be determined. Yes. Before and during Skinwalker Ranch by the exact same team, Bob Bigelow, the team at NIDS, Jacques Vallée, remote viewers like Ingo Swan, Yuri Geller. A lot of really fascinating people have been up at this ranch investigating it just as heavily as Skinwalker Ranch, but nobody knows about it. Mount Wilson is full of UFO sightings and this whole valley, especially this ranch in particular, has sightings of a Native American apparition of a shaman figure that appears and startles and scares people. So tonight I'm gonna to be investigating this entire place, doing paranormal investigating, looking for UFOs. So make sure and subscribe, turn on notifications. We got a lot to do. I wouldn't be surprised if a lot of the stories that you've actually heard about Skinwalker Ranch, if some of those didn't happen here and they superimposed the stories. This place has been totally kept a secret. Nobody really knows about it. I might be one of the first people since that original team to come up here with cameras and actually have permission to look around. So I don't know, we're gonna get geared up, try to make contact with this apparition that seems to be haunting this place, as well as look for UFOs flying in and around Mount Wilson. So far today, if you haven't watched my last video, I've just been driving up here, getting an orientation of the place, interviewing people, trying to get the whole story and piecing it together. And I'm telling you, this rabbit hole goes deep. Just as much as Skinwalker Ranch was a big thing, that mountain and this ranch was just as heavily researched and just as many fascinating people came here, but nobody knows about it. Why? There's ancient petroglyphs in the valleys and the canyons all over the place. There's supposedly kivas, burial sites, petroglyphs all over here. They even came up and removed artifacts and mummies, Spanish artifacts, and there's rumors of gold and buried treasure. All the same kind of stuff going on here as you've heard in other locations. But to me, this seems totally untouched, totally unknown. I have no idea why. So we're gonna try and figure that out. Inside this very saloon, there have been a ton of paranormal sightings as far as seeing uh, a cowboy and paranormal stuff happen even in the bathroom. A couple being seen sitting in chairs up on the balcony upstairs that aren't actually there and a whole bunch of other stuff. Not to mention this Native American shaman figure who's supposedly really tall and dressed with feathers and everything will appear to people who stay in these two motel rooms. This is the one that we're gonna be staying in tonight as well as doing a lot of other paranormal investigating walking around in the saloon and the settlers camp down below. So we're gonna get all of our gear ready as the sun goes down and we'll see what we find. I might have to split this up into separate videos where I do part of the night here, part of the evening in the saloon and part of it down there. We'll try and stitch it all together, but make sure and subscribe so you don't miss out on the other parts. If uh, things start to pop off, I'm just gonna keep recording and keep gathering the evidence. So we'll see. The rumor is that when Bob Bigelow himself came up here with Jacques Vallée, Hal Putoff, uh, Eric Davis, other researchers uh, sitting right here in front of the saloon, they wrote about it in one of Jacques Vallée's books when they came here. But apparently Bob Bigelow stayed in this exact room and he had an encounter with the shaman apparition that he doesn't talk about. I don't know if that's true or not, but he's not the only one. Other people have stayed in these rooms and then come out the next morning having all kinds of strange uh, experiences that people can't explain. So this is where we're gonna stay tonight. It should be interesting. I think we're gonna have to spend some time definitely in this room. We'll set up to do some paranormal investigating and see what we see, but it would be very interesting if we saw an apparition, especially if we could catch it on camera. But it makes you wonder why all these important people tied to these kinds of places 
We're here having experiences and not talking about it or sharing it with anybody. The people who sleep in these rooms, they wake up the next morning and they're like, why didn't you tell me? Why didn't you tell me? Uh, to Jeff and the owners, because they see this shaman figure appear in their bedroom like an apparition. It's like a ghost that appears and looks over them near their bedside and then vanishes. And sometimes doors open and slam and shut. And especially a lot of that happens over in this saloon and in this old building, almost like something that went on when they were doing the missile testing program and all of that that was going on. They started researching and they interacted with some Native American burial stuff up here in the canyon and all kinds of stuff went haywire. This is a very interesting photograph. This is Jacques Vallée right there at uh, Mount Wilson Ranch. It mentions Bigelow here in Nevada with Hal Putoff and the whole team. Notice the building right here and the trees. Oh, that's exactly where we are right here, right now in the exact same spot. This is the book. This is where they were parked um, in Forbidden Science, Volume 4. Four, journals 1990 to 99, the Spring Hill Chronicles by Jacques Vallée. There's a photograph where at exactly the same time and before Skinwalker Ranch, there was Mount Wilson Ranch, this place right here. And Bigelow stayed in this hotel room and claims that he had an interaction with the shaman ghost, a ghost shaman, an apparition. And they did light and sound experiments up in the mountains and in the canyons and the cliff walls up there and the evidence of uh, that is right here in this book standing in the exact same location today oh this bat just about landed on me hello little bat look at you hi how are you doing man <laughs> look at that he just came up and almost landed on my head and then just landed right here on the railing in front of the Smokehouse Mount Wilson Ranch Saloon, where a bunch of paranormal and UFO investigating has gone on. Look at this guy. Ew, I'm not going to touch him because I don't know if he has any diseases, and I hope he doesn't jump on me, but he's pretty cool. Ooh. Hello. All right, I think I was able to fit all of my gear into this little pack right here, other than my meditation headset. Uh, but we're going to come back to this room last. So I think what I'm going to do is start the investigation over at the saloon and that building where there's been a lot of uh, paranormal ghost sightings and things like that that have occurred. And then if I'll check out on the sky and see if we can see any UFOs. And then after that, we'll see about going down to the settler's house and then we'll wind up up here trying to sleep in the bedroom to see if the shaman shows up. So it's time to go over to the saloon, get set up in there and see what we find. Not so long ago, we had somebody sitting here at the bar. They're looking me where Carl is there. Uh, they look up, they see those that table up there, but they see two people sitting at the table. Right. So just like the exact same point of view that everybody watching this has right now is where the person was sitting at the bar almost. And what they saw in the reflection up there was two people sitting in those chairs. And when everybody looked up, there was actually nobody there and they freaked out and then he left. Promptly right? ran out the door. <laughs> okay, so we're gonna start tonight's investigation with the spirit box. This can, this can get annoying. So if I edit this around, we'll do that. But if we get any kind of responses, We'll see what we get. So what we're going to do here is this scans through the different FM radio stations, like at a really high rate of speed. Uh, and then we'll ask questions. And sometimes the spirits or energy here, it's all pseudoscience, but it can like give us responses. So we'll ask a question and then we'll wait and see if anything comes through. Does that make sense? First of all, notice how we don't hear anything. It's just static, right? No voices. If there's anyone here in this 
saloon that would like to communicate with us, you can talk to us through this radio. So can you please tell us your name if there's someone here? Did you just hear a bang? That was just like, okay, and then I just heard a man's voice on the radio. Where did you hear that bang from? I couldn't tell exactly, to be honest. It, you, it sounded like it was right over in there. You're also welcome to knock on the walls yeah. or make noise for us if that's how you like to communicate as well. You don't have to use the radio. That the shaman was in that doorway? Yeah. Yeah, that was right there. Somebody at one point had seen him in that doorway. Yeah. I can't remember if that was Donna Bardeen or who. Matt and Shirley. So Matt seen him there? Oh, yeah. No, Matt saw him from, he was in room one, and he was looking over, at, standing outside, smoking a cigarette, and he saw a shadow go down the hallway. He came banging on our door in a panic. And he's like, there's a shadow in there. I'm like, sorry. Sweating Jeff. the whole nine yards. He was. He was scared. I've never seen that that way. Really? And then I came over with a flashlight, and I'm just like, go walk through there, Nick Nack. And I'm like, all right. So we went and walked through, but it was literally, he said it was a shadow that went down the hallway. Just right down this left hallway, and then he's been seen on the right, too. Okay, no pranking me. You guys stay put. <laughs> Here I go. Okay. So left, right, or up? This is like, this is like the worst choose your own adventure ever. <laughs> Just kidding. I actually don't get any bad vibes here at all. Um, but the whole time I walk around outside, I, I feel like I'm being watched. I definitely feel that. I'm only using the flashlight just for the quality so it doesn't get all grainy. If we see anything. Okay. This is the cowboy bathroom, and there is a very weird vibe to this room for some reason. So I'm just going to step in here. Big curtain right here. Okay. Shower. Oh, that door just shut. Okay. So the story goes that, well, oh yeah, the mirror room. This is weird. So, first of all, they've got like a little Nathaniel right there, but apparently people stand in these mirrors like this, and there's a dual reflection that goes from this mirror over to that one. And apparently when people start looking into that, the reflections get bizarre or they see apparitions in the layers of reflection as they go into the other different levels of it. So maybe we'll take a look at that for a second. If there is any kind of uh, spirit or entity of the shaman or anything, please reveal yourself through the reflection of the mirror. Make yourself known so that we can communicate with you. Understand what's going on here. I feel like compelled to go down that hallway. I can totally see how the angle of the mirror is because the way this is tilted forward it would make it possible. You can actually see yourself in the reflection in the distance. See, so clear back there behind me in that mirror, you can see. You're. I can see my own face, right? So you know, you're. Not, I'm not used to doing that. Looking in a double mirror and seeing like a quadruple reflection plus the back of my own head. So I can totally see how you get staring into this, and you can see. Things maybe you shouldn't. Uh, weird. Okay, let's go down the hall here because 
a lot of the sightings are people seeing stuff sitting in the dining room. If someone used to live here or dwell in this place or on this land, you are welcome to make yourself known and greet me here. Mind if I join you here in the dining room? Whoever likes to sit in here at night? I feel like I'm being watched. I feel like someone's outside watching me, but I don't know. If there's uh, anyone in the room with me or a presence here, you can knock on the walls or the table or move one of these chairs. Objects, please let me know that you're here. I've been told that someone likes to sit in here in the dining room at night. Can you please uh, let me know where your favorite chair is, where you like to sit? watched someone's in here watching me can you please move something or make a noise oh can you flicker my light you can turn my light off just take the energy out of the batteries if that's how you work if you need to use that energy from the light you can do that okay If you would like to communicate with me through the light, you can definitely touch that light on the table if you want, or move anything in the room. Blink the light off twice uh, to let me know that you're here. I can't tell if my eyes are playing tricks on me or, or if the if the light is like flickering on and off. I feel like there's something <laughs> Here's the window. Well, they definitely could have seen it if there was somebody out here, but you guys are going to have to let me know if you saw anything. I find myself outside the saloon looking through the windows now. 
Uh, I could have sworn that I felt somebody was looking at me behind my shoulders, but it could just be because I'm, I'm familiar with this place a little bit. But... This is where you guys get to watch my back like this while I walk around. Let me know if you see anything. We're going back through the cafeteria. If anything is nervous and would like to come up and communicate with me, this is a good opportunity to do that. Move something in the room if you're shy. I'm not, I'm, my back is to you right now. I'm just looking with this, with this device. My light is having issues. Brand new batteries. Other than feeling like something was watching me out that window. If there's someone here, uh, you can move around. Whoa, my light keeps flashing every time I ask that question. If there's someone here, uh, please let me know that you're here. You can affect my light. <laughs> every time I ask that, you see it, it flickers. Can you move in front of my camera or move an object in the room, please? Wow, every time, I see how it blinks? Look at that. There is some, see, amb some ambient dust floating in the room, so I don't want to mistake that for like an orb or something. Yeah. You guys dry. This thing keeps dying on me. My microphone setup, uh, this whole thing keeps dying on me my flashlight and then a night vision. And I think I brought extra batteries, but. Again, how would you research that and find that out? How would you do anything with that? Should I, I could do my EMF detector and walk around. We could try that way. Uh, we are just getting a lot of batteries draining and dying. And you guys were just talking about how everybody else who's come through here and has film crews and equipment, their stuff all goes dead on them too, which is the same pattern. It's just like there's weird energetic anomalies like in these kinds of places where there's paranormal activity that's reported. So uh, maybe we'll get some of this other gear out and try it. Full time, well, let's see. I gotta switch my phone into airplane mode to make sure I'm not setting it off too. I think it's worse from here because next we have to go to the settlement shack. Okay, so. Some of the signals on this just kind of spiked for a second. Notice the battery's full. There is a weird feeling in this room, that's for sure. I can't see anything because I didn't bring a flashlight down here. So you guys are seeing it exactly how I'm seeing it. Nothing on the EMF detector. It's weird feelings. So far, just equipment failures. Everything normal on the EMF. Nothing on the EMF. It is so dark out here. And this is very creepy. So this settlement house down here is very old. Uh, this old like motel building down here, they see the ghost of a man with his dog. And people see all kinds of interesting balls of light and different things moving through this valley and in and out of the mountain as well as UFOs all the time.
Is that a star? I mean, look how bright that is compared to all the others. What is that? They all went right up that canyon right there on the right side of your screen and did the same experiments that were done in Close Encounters of the Third Kind. With lights, whoa, I just saw a light down here to my right. Blink on and off. Okay, this was the original Skinwalker Ranch. I can hear something moving around right over there. That must be a planet or some kind of a star because it still hasn't moved. What is moving around over there? This is starting to feel like some found footage stuff, huh? I feel like I'm being watched and I feel like there's something in the trees right over there. I don't think I'm going to walk through the middle of these two buildings. I'm going to go around this way. Sorry if I'm shaking. It's literally just really rough terrain here. There is the mountain. And this is the settler's shack where the original settlers of this place actually slept and stayed. People hear stuff down here all the time. They hear people waiting for the stagecoach. <clears throat> all kinds of stuff right here. My intuition does not want to go in here. I'm seriously, I just realized I was gripping the camera handle very tight. Nervous. Whoa, there's bats flying around in there. Did you see that? Over here in this building, whoa, watch your step. Over here in this building is where they see a man with his dog. He's like a guy not wearing a shirt. See those bats flying around? I don't know if it's that bat that's stuck inside the settler's building right here, but something is banging around on the walls inside here. I can hear something knocking on the walls. And for some reason I keep feeling like I'm being tricked. Um, but not by the people here, it just feels like a weird energy. If there's anyone in here, can you move something around and let me know that you're here? Any of the original settlers of this place?
keep feeling like somebody's watching me over there. That is, could just be because it's creepy. If there's anyone in here, could you make a knocking sound and let me know? I feel like I don't like turning my back on the room. But honestly, I mean, it's just completely quiet right now. Usually right when I say that is when weird stuff happens, right? Oh, I'm gripping the camera handle so tight. I'm sorry that it's so shaky. Hello? If there's anybody here, can you let me know? I am circling around the building, coming up behind around where I could hear that noise up in the trees. I was talking earlier about the technique called the Columbo, and that's where right after you've left the room or an area, you turn around and you go back twice as fast to see if you catch something hiding. And you walk back twice as fast the way you just came to see if you catch something sneaking up on you. And you turn around. Is that eye shine looking at me? Oh, it moved. What is that a bat? What is that? There's an eye shine looking at me on the ground right there and it just moved weird. What is that? Oh my gosh, is that a huge bat? Why is it? It's blinking. big bat that was up in the it's like a little bird hello look at that thing it's like a little Whoa, there it goes <laughs> That's crazy. I wonder if eyes of animals like that could easily get mistaken as orbs looking back at you because that was wild trying to figure out what that was. <laughs> right in here. Oh my gosh. Okay, I wonder if that was the critter that was actually stuck inside of the settler shack here banging around. It was just like a baby owl it looked like. Going down to the settler shack. That's an interesting experience. Everywhere I go up here, I feel like I'm being watched. I feel like something is lurking around. I keep looking over my shoulder. I get tempted to film like this because I want to see if something's following me. Totally that vibe, especially down there by the settler shack. Let alone, we haven't even stayed in the hotel room where the tall Native American figure of the ghost apparently appears by your bedside so we still have that to do tonight all right me and adam are going back through the saloon in the dining room here and we're going to head back down to the settlers camp and use the spirit box and then what was the other room the in the motel the a a room one a, one, one a? yeah okay so we're gonna go check that out so I was just down here alone with the night vision and 
there was something banging around on the walls and I don't know if it was this bird thing that I ran into or what. So, oh, okay. Watch your step. And then there's this room down here where the guy with like no shirt on and his dog seemed to hang out as well as um, I've been tested to go into a particular room down here and walk around and to see what happens if something happens to me. So it's up here. One eight. He, he walked me in it earlier and I filmed and I can't remember which one it is. I felt like it was here, but maybe it was this one. Was it that very first one? Why is the door locked now? Wow, was it the, totally the other end? One of the stories is this guy, somebody sleeping in here, woke up and there was just an apparition in the bed next to them uh, looking at them and it freaked them out. There's always doors slamming and things. I don't know which bedroom it was. Whoa. Whoa, dude. I just got the weirdest feeling right, right here. here at the corner of the mattress. Something just moved. So when I walked through, I didn't want to say nothing, but I got what the on me. I felt like I had ah, dude, I had something just moved through here, man. Cobwebs came across. That's why I stopped right here. No, right. I felt that something moved right here in the corner. Something right something in here. Something right here. I may have even got the audio of that on camera. I literally turned because I thought that maybe you... We're like hiding there, playing a joke on me. No. Dude, that, okay. Uh, we, wow, dude. Okay, that was crazy. An entire rush of energy went up through my body. And all the hair on the back of my neck just stood up like something was coming up behind me. Whoa, I, dude. I don't, I don't know exactly what they were talking Is about. Is this the bed where the apparition appeared? I'm not sure. I'm just like, I'm a little taken back. Because I wanted to see your reaction. You waited for me to come through, and I, I sensed I it too, I didn't, right? I didn't want to say it. Yeah, but when I walked right, through, right there, there, man, it felt like I had cobwebs no. in my face, and then, like you say, you no, I it, felt something go some whoosh and rush up behind yeah. me, and I heard something move past that plastic. I felt something move up through the bed area right here. No, I don't want to. No, I, I, do you, uh, I don't want to mess with anything. I, I want to. Well, hang on here. I'm, enjoying, I'm here for the experience. It's yes, sir. No, this is great. I hope I got the audio of that on camera. Now, if there's somebody in here with us, can you please shut a door or make yourself known to us? We're not here to irritate you or to do anything. We're just trying to explore the things we don't understand about reality. I mean, I felt something come up over me right here. Like, that was crazy. Right here. Like, something went whoof. Like, I, I swear, like, something was standing up off of the bed or off of the couch and walking up behind me right there. I swung around thinking it was you, dude. No, and I mean, I stopped here trying to look for cobwebs or anything to see if I could. Okay. I 
I spent a lot of time here at the Mount Wilson Ranch, and that definitely was my most uh, wow, dude. chilling hair <laughs> That hair was hair wild. Something moved up through right there, dude. That was weird. And he was telling me, he's like, go in there and go in that first room and, and just walk through from one room to the next. And then and then they looked at each other like, we'll see if he sees it or if something happens. And right here, dude. Wow. Okay, um, so whatever is going on here is still, it's not like it left just because we're talking about it, you know. So, what do you say, I get the, I think I brought the spirit box, I did. We could just set this up and sit and talk for a minute. Okay, so this is actually, here's where we're actually sitting, there's where Adam is on the couch. This is where that weird feeling is, we're going to. Point the camera into the mirror like this, just like we did at the bar at the saloon. And I'm going to put the mic over here towards where that movement was. Yeah. I, after feeling what I felt yeah, walking right through there, I think we should try everything <laughs> possible. <Yeah. laughs> that was okay. the most creep that I've ever been. If there's uh, anyone in here staying in this room with us, can you please make yourself known and appear or move through the area again so we can sense you or hear you on this radio? I just asked like 10 things in a row because I'm nervous, dude. Yeah, I was trying to think. Okay, I'm gonna slow now. <laughs> What's a good question to ask? I don't. I guess if there's a spirit or something yeah. here, then you know. Because... If there is someone in this room with us, can you please let us know through this radio, please? Can you please say your name into this radio? I've never felt like this in a place like this before. This is bizarre. That was wild. Let's let's leave the building. I want to try something. Yeah. Hey, we're going to go now so you guys can just relax or whoever was in here. If you're hiding or just hanging out, we'll just give you some space, but we might come back in just a second. If there's anybody here. Uh, God, I don't even know what I'm doing right now. It's so weird. Okay, totally. dude, I don't even know what to do. Yeah. Okay, so we're standing outside now. We just, <laughs> and Adam just walked outside. We're letting whatever's in there reset itself or whatever. But no joke, walking from one room to the next, it was like walking through a wave. It was like, whoop, and I felt like this, like something was running up behind me. So I just wanted to come outside, clear my head for a second, and then do it. I just saw a meteor on the street down here. And then we're going to go back in again. But as soon as I turn the spirit box on, it's like this weird feeling like, nope. And so I just turn it off. There's another one. Another one? Yeah. We might have to get the night vision out and do some UFO watching as well. Yeah, dude, we haven't even gone in the settlers building. Okay. Uh, man. All right. I'm. What do you say we walk back through and we just walk through like... I don't even know what to do. Let's just walk in again. Just walk in and look around again. I mean, it's straight in there.
It's in there. That go to the other rooms? Yeah, that's the in the room. If there's uh, anyone in here with us, can you make yourself known? Can you shut a door or slam something or knock on the wall? Can you make that noise again? I don't know what that was. Dude, that was weird. Yeah, this wasn't the typical, uh, <laughs> that was weird, man. There's nothing under that bed. Dare you to lay down and look. <laughs> Eat both ways, too, man. Look behind you, too, under this one. Is there, or is this just stuff stacked up? Where is it from? This. Uh, yeah. Oh. Yeah, I believe Why did the energy move through right here, though? That's where you felt it, too? Right here. It was like there was something between the bed and the corner of yeah. the wall and as soon as you pass through right yeah there, i right walked there. right through here and it was like whoa and i turned around like literally yeah. somebody was going to jump on my back That's, i stopped there. i felt like something was going to jump on my back <laughs> i didn't want to say anything but so i kept on walking That's why you brought it up. So, yeah yeah i seriously went through all these rooms like what are they talking about and then we walked right through that threshold and it was like i felt like something was going to run and jump on me they're sage Somebody's been burning sage in here, worried about the same thing, right? <laughs> Somebody had the same bad juju going on. <laughs> That's not something you want to feel when you're walking to go to the bathroom at night, though, because that was terrifying if you were in here by yourself. Yep. Oh, it felt like something was going to jump on my back, yeah. That was creepy, dude. There's just like some animal head of antelope up there. Wow. Yeah, I've only felt like that a couple of other places, but that was bizarre, dude. I like this one in particular because it uses the 18650 batteries. Which kind is that? Cloud Defense. Oh, nice. Yeah, dude. Yeah, my light sucks. You go in first with that one. <laughs> <laughs> you don't my light feel good. All right. So I heard something knocking around down here, and I don't know if it was that night was hawk or that, that bat or whatever it was flying around in here that I saw out on the ground, but. Gosh, I haven't been inside here since I was a little kid. Really? Yeah. I don't even get the same weird feeling as over there in that room, dude. I got nothing. Nothing, it nothing feels totally here. like I could camp in here. It feels, yeah. feels nice. I know I wouldn't want to, because, <laughs> but you know, I just mean the v the feeling in here is totally. I almost rather. Doesn't it feel totally different? Like if I had to pick, I'd probably rather stay the night right here than in there. That's that so was, weird, man. That was, well, I don't know. It might be cool to stay the night in there and get the experience. But... Good point. Stay in there so you can't handle it no more, and then come over here. Maybe I'll stay up in the motel room with the uh, with the shaman, and then we'll go. If I come back or stay another night, we'll do that room. Yeah, this is no Yeah, dude. I mean, a different, uh, a whole nother episode or a whole nother series. Or yeah. Another... There's a lot to do here. Yeah, like stay the night in that room. <laughs> <laughs> Somebody was sage in that place, dude. Somebody else stayed in there and was like, no way. <laughs> we might have to spend a night down in that room. I mean, that was wild, man. That was like something coming up from behind, whoo, rushing up like it was gonna jump on my back. Uh, not in the settlers camp, in that motel room. Go figure, right? It's weird. I didn't even have any eye. Whoa, dude, don't do that crap. You guys are jerks. Ah, shame on you. You broke the rule. You broke the rule. I always. No, if you guys knew what just happened to us down there in the motel, you wouldn't be doing that to us right now. I'm pre. I've. 
Oh, it was wild. He's stuttering. No, <laughs> we happened? seriously had something like going from room one to room two, walked right past uh, those mirrors by the couch, and where those beds are stacked up in the corner. Right when I walked past that, he had the same thing as me. It felt like something rushing up, gonna jump on our back. It was like an energy flowing up, like it was gonna. I walked through there, giving me good chills. And I walked through there, and he was behind me, and I stopped because I felt like something was on my face. Yeah. Before I, I went like that real quick, and then I was like cobwebs. Well, I'm looking, and I got like there was no cobwebs or nothing, and I'm chills, feeling all weird, and I walked on, and I'm like, I'm gonna see what he says. So he, he walks got ahead right of to me. The same spot and did the same thing. Yeah, so I go through that same spot and then I thought he was pranking me like you guys just did. No. And I thought somebody was running up behind me, gonna like go blah and jump on my back. So I went, whoa, and turn around. And I may even have the audio of sound of it coming up on the camera. But I swung around and yeah. felt like something was gonna grab me and there's nothing there. And then I turned back around and Adam comes out of the bathroom. Like he wasn't there. I don't know what that was, but we both felt it. That oh, same it corner. Was wild. That same corner. It, st it stopped me for a second, and I was confused as all hell. And then I was like, "I'm gonna walk on." So I walked on into the. It felt like if something, and... like literally, if something was running up to jump scare you from behind, and then you turn around and it's just gone. Mm -hmm. Like it. It was weird. 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 Like. Yeah. Going from that room one to room two, we walked through all the bedrooms and the bathrooms, and then right so at that spot. So we're talking. A A. I don't know the numbers. Okay, the room. So, so the we went one, in that very first the room, very first and then we went into the second room, and there's like a a couch and where the beds and are all mirrors. Yeah. Yep, where yes, the beds are where the beds up. are stacked up is what it felt like. It came out of that corner and like rushed up behind us, built or like he felt like he was walking through cobwebs, and I felt like something yeah. was going to jump on me. Ooh. Yeah. Ooh. Give me chills. Yeah, yeah, that was a creepy one. Oh. Does that fit with any of the weird stories? Uh, or? That's a little more intensive. Kind of. <laughs> you know, yeah. I, I don't normally see Adam. Uh... I mean, that was weird, dude. <laughs> yeah, right? like, uh, I've weird. never had that kind of experience before. Yeah, but there you go. Yeah, so that was that weird. Would be, that so, would be unique. I, I, I mean, I yeah. can't tell you the if action. it was good or bad or whatever. I think it was good because it's something I've never experienced before. I mean... This is where there's down there where they people the, have seen well, like a guy with his dog or something. Yes, though? Yeah. Really down through the building. There's yeah. multiple stories. Each of the rooms has a, a unique little uh, thing to it. Okay. But in between A A and A is uh, A. Mm -hmm. the, and then yeah. C is the room. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Interesting. Hey. Right? Super weird. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And now I gotta go stay. In that creepy room over there, <laughs> after experiencing all that here, <laughs> yeah, we did. So we explored there and then went to the settler's cabin. Uh huh. And it was like instantly walking in there was a one hundred percent. It felt completely like different atmosphere, energy. Yeah. Energy, everything was clean and clear and everything. Yeah. And in the motel, like I would have rather stayed the night in the settler's cabin than in where. We ran yeah. into whatever it was. In that room where those mattresses are, it feels like you're like in the deep end. Decided to go as an entire group back down to the room to see uh, if anything happens when we all go back down now. So here we go. Return visit. What do we call this building? This is the bunkhouse. The bunkhouse. Okay, going down <laughs> to the haunted bunkhouse. <laughs> I'm gonna I'm gonna call it haunted because that was <laughs> probably in the definitely the top three weirdest like haunted things I've experienced. I'm not gonna say it's haunted, but I'm gonna say it's active. It was there was, was active. active. I, yeah, maybe haunted is a bad wrong word, but that yeah, was. I was gonna say. Well, I mean, I, haunted made me a little uncomfortable. <laughs> it was paranormal, that's for sure. See, I always find something. On my walks, what is today? It's like a lantern that's like from an oil lantern. Mm -hmm. Wow, can't, yeah. Let's see, what do we got going today? Is that a nice guy tonight? Yeah. Oh. I know, it's I can't believe it cleared up. I just saw one of those flickers in the sky, whatever they are. Oh, we've seen uh, two uh, shooting stars. There was two Did shoot, really? yeah, two yeah. shooting stars, right. like back to back. Yeah, just right up there in the sky. 
Okay. Be my guest. Let's do it. My spidey senses just went on high alert. I mean, that feels weird. I'm telling all y'all right now, if I had to sleep in here, it would be very uncomfortable would for me. Would you like to change rooms tonight? <laughs> no, to come down here? Yes. I think I'll stick to the, to the shaman room. Yeah, so no joke, it was like something ran up behind me from behind the beds right here. It felt like something was running up to push me in the back. Uh, and I fully expected something to shove me in the back. And I thought it was Adam pranking me, but no, sir, it was not. He was in the bathroom here. So right when I walked through here, yeah, it was just like I was something rushed up from the corner. Feeling better now or feel any different or... I mean, just I got normal. an eerie feeling, but I don't have it, it ain't nothing like Yeah, I definitely there. didn't want to come back in here. As soon as we walked in, I was like, I don't want to go in. <laughs> Maybe there's too many people scared it. Maybe we scared it earlier. I don't know, man. And that door goes to the other rooms. That one goes to C. So A, B, these three are connected. I think next to go out there and she'll open up. Well, man, if you ever decide to like let people come and stay here, paranormal investigators could come and stay in this room because this is top three weirdest places I've walked through and experienced that. I mean, that was weird. You guys run out and lock me in here alone. Yes. We would uh, yeah, you now. you would, right? Oh, I would. Wedge the door shut on me. I, I heard you out there. What was your heart attack there? You oh, are we going in the other rooms that. now? Go ahead. Me? You. Me first, huh? So when they've stayed in the other room, they hear country music playing in here yes. through the wall. Yes. Got a lot of walls in there. I know the other room will handle. Yeah. Especially if they can go to the electric. Why do I know? Hmm. Yeah. Oh, that's the door right there. Yes. Okay. <laughs> yes. And that interject connects all four of those rooms. Yes. Well, we don't have to come back and stay here, but I think we'll stay up in the motel tonight and see if we run into the shaman. But wow, that was weird. So we decided to just come back in the room one more time before we leave. And I walked past that corner. I wasn't even filming and it felt like I was walking through cobwebs. Like, why? And there's no spider webs. What is it with this room? No, I was just standing right here, right in front of me. And it felt like, like cobwebs were all over my face. That's what you felt? It felt like I was walking through spider webs right here. Yeah. There's nothing there though. I even tried to wipe wipe it off my face. That's not nothing there. Yeah, see I just felt it up my left arm right there. I just felt it go right up my left arm right here. It felt like something brushed up my left arm. I left my EMS sensors and trifold meter and stuff up. And you know, it just feels like a weird static or something in I the got air. It on my elbow that time. Did you just feel? It feels oh, like. Yeah. Oh yeah. 
I wonder if even just the plastic off the beds is making a static feeling, but I mean, that feels weird. That's not, I don't think it's the beds. I mean, Ew, I just got to go through my face right there. What the? F what is going on in this place? Something just went through my body right there, through my face. Hello? That was weird. There's nothing in here, man. Oh, that was weird. You know, it's even better. We well, don't even have power on in this whole section down here. Like I was standing right here and it, it felt like, it felt like staticky go across the hair, all the hairs of my legs. And then it felt like cobwebs all go across my face and then out my back. <clears throat> like something walked through me. <laughs> I mean, that was weird. I'm not seeing anything though. I don't see nothing. Right? <laughs> I don't know. Okay, let's. I want to go outside again. <laughs> They're outside, not talking about it. I just came in here by myself. I don't know what is going on, man. This place has some weird vibe moving around in here. I mean, there is a, there's a spider. I mean, there could be. We'll come back tomorrow and look through here for spider webs and stuff, but. And I was just standing there in the doorway and it felt like something went through my body or something. It felt like something just passed through my face and like something touched all my leg hairs and then went out through the back of my body. Like it was going through this doorway and I was standing in the way. It just feels like a weird static electricity like goes uh, across your hair and through your body. And now I get to go back up to the motel and sleep in the room where the shaman appears and looms over you like a shadow figure in the dark. So that should be better. Well, now I'm supposed to come in here and sleep in this room where people have a shadow figure of a shaman that appears and looms over them in the bedroom and makes noise through this wall and slams doors open and shut all night. So we'll see if anything even happens here. I don't know, but after what I just experienced down there uh, in the, I don't know. I don't know. It's going to be weird trying to go to sleep tonight after feeling all of that and experiencing all of that down there. That was probably top three weirdest things ever. Um, and not even in one of the old buildings. It's just like in, in in one of the like motel rooms down there. It doesn't even make sense. But now we're gonna try to set up here. Wish me luck, guys. Make sure and subscribe, turn on notifications. We'll try and get through the night, see if we see anything. Not let it get to me. So I'm gonna make sure and check inside all the closets. Like there's a picture of a Native American chief there, but there's nothing in here. No other way in the room. I've already locked the door, so we're alone, alone in the room, unless there's someone here that isn't supposed to be here from another dimension of the spirit world. I mean, I like the dream catcher. That's cool. This whole place is full of symbols that are the same as petroglyphs, like Kachina dolls, Native American themed. Yeah, it's very cool. I like the decorations. Everything is really awesome and beautiful about this place. Yeah, see, even the pillows look like the depictions on the petroglyphs and the pictographs. 
right? Supposedly, Bob Bigelow is one of the people who stayed in this exact room while he was up here with Hal Putoff, Jacques Vallée, uh, Ingo Swan, and Yuri Geller. And they uh, were up here doing experiments trying to contact extraterrestrials up on the mountain, as well as researching other stuff about the shaman apparition that exists here and appears in this room. Well, here I sit. So far, I haven't had anything occur. I just got off the phone with Chris Bartell, kind of recounting with him the activities of the day and the evening. And then I actually walked back over in the dark to grab this book, Forbidden Science, uh, by Jacques Vallée, because I wasn't sure if in my excitement if I had actually seen this properly. Because here's Jacques Vallée right here. It says, on our field survey at Bigelow's Mount Wilson Ranch. That's exactly where I'm at right now. In fact, this is the room that I'm staying in right behind them. They're parked <laughs> right out front of this window. In that photo, uh, it says Dr. Hal Putoff was here, Dr. Tim Ryan from SARA. I think these were the guys that were supposed to put the equipment in at Skinwalker Ranch. And this is August 1996. And it talks about right here in August 1996 this is basically when the they take the private airplane flight from nevada and instead of coming here first they decide to go up to vernal and this is where um bigelow buys skinwalker ranch but then in the midst of this whole story this whole thing this whole story takes place actually here at mount wilson not up in utah and so here's Hal Putoff and Jacques Vallée having this whole conversation about the Stanford Research Institute, Yuri Geller, and Ingo Swan in a conversation with Hal Putoff, Jacques Vallée on Bob Bigelow's property up here. And then they're having this whole conversation about UFO propulsion systems and all about, uh, not that Ingo Swan was actually here, these guys are psychic spies <laughs> for the CIA, right? What are they all doing up here at Mount Wilson? See, look, there's even a story in here about aliens who were building a craft for the U.S. that were killed in an accident. It mentions right here, the ghost of a tall Native American is rumored to show up in one of the rooms. Uh, this room. This room. So this is the room that I'm in right now. <laughs> that room, great. It also says that Bigelow and these guys came here. This is in August 1996. He's completing the purchase of a Nevada ranch near Mount Wilson. That's exactly where I'm at right now. Where UFOs have been seen along with an elusive ghost. He plans to have the head of SARA come over to discuss instrumentation so here's the plan i have this museum of tarot.com mind to mind uh, this is a meditation enhancement system i'm going to put this on my head and turn it on and do meditation to try and make contact with the shaman I'm literally just going to sit here on the bed with a flashlight set up my night vision right over there on the table try to get a decent view of the room and see what happens all right, so I can't get a good camera angle in this room with this tiny little tripod for my night vision. And so I'm not able to turn the lights off and actually do what I want to. I have a tripod out in my truck. And so I decided, why don't I just go ahead and walk over at night? It's actually uh, going on three o'clock, past three o'clock in the morning. And so I might as well go walk around the saloon one more time. I'm gonna dark walk over to the saloon. So this is what it looks like out here at night. There is the saloon over there. And this is the window. This is where all the photo was taken, where they, they were just parked, for, you know, right there in front of this building. So, okay, let's go check it out. I'll walk through here and then we'll come back and get uh, get my tripod. 
So now right through these doors is uh, where people have seen a shadow figure walking around up and down these halls. All right, so if you're me, you're standing here right now. Um, which way do you go? Left or right? I think I'm gonna go left. I'll do a big circle. Or should I go right? <laughs> okay, let's go down the long hallway. We'll come back through here. There's just all sorts of interesting stuff everywhere. Okay, we're in the saloon. There's no lights on in here at all. Yo, okay. Big mirrors uh, are definitely unsettling. All the taxidermy stuff in here, the Kachina dolls and such. I mean, they're cool looking, but coming in here at night with all these old pianos and stuff, <clears throat> it definitely has a haunted house vibe, that's for sure. Whew, man. Okay, walking through the saloon. Here's the pool table. Storage rooms back there. This is the cowboy bathroom where people see apparitions here all the time as well. And also up there, they hear noises and stuff coming through that false wall and see different things, but... Okay, here we go. Past the cowboy bathroom. I don't feel so alone that I'm filming and I have you guys here with me, but I mean, it is definitely a spooky feeling, especially after what we've already experienced here. Should go through the dining room again. Here we go. Now oh, they see a ghost sitting at the table in here sometimes in this room up ahead. people have reported. I don't feel any of the same kind of energy or anything. Like I did down <clears throat> at the settler's cabin down there. But definitely creepy, that's for sure. This whole place, though. I don't even like walking with a flashlight in my face because it blinds my line of sight. I can't see anything.
you're wondering what this is all about with this headset that I'm wearing, uh, this thing actually sends electromagnetic waves. It's actually doing it right now. That's what this red light indicates. Uh, through my brain and through my head, affecting my consciousness and my awareness. Uh, okay, with the lighting like this in the room, I'm already feeling like I'm seeing something moving around over here. So I'm going to close my eyes for a moment. I'm recording with the night vision. I've got my phone right here that I can record with. I do have one little light here just for ambient lighting, but now I'm going to meditate with this headset on and see if the shaman will arrive. This headset uh, was originally developed through the Stanford Research Institute by Dr. Michael Persinger in order to amplify the human brain waves or align it with the Earth's electromagnetic field and expand your consciousness. So the idea is to do a sort of version of remote viewing. Now I am visualizing the room and the place that I'm sitting in as though extending my own energy and location and also extending an intention of friendliness. I keep thinking I'm seeing something out of the corner of my field of view over here to my left in this corner, of course, where it's out of camera view. My phone battery's dead. I mean, it's it's our it's way on low power mode, and I haven't I've been recharging it. That's so weird. If there's anyone here in the room with me, can you please let me know? This is what my point of view looks like right here. Apparently people wake up and he's just like standing by the bed. So I don't know, kind of sounds like a sleep paralysis thing. Uh, but I don't want to just dismiss it as that because I have felt like I'm being watched and I feel like there's, I keep feeling like I'm seeing shapes over here, but I mean, I don't know. I just keep getting this weird sensation from over here in this corner, like I want to look over there and then I don't see anything. It could just be an illusion from the electromagnetic headset and the cycle making me feel like I want to turn my head that way or something. I keep hearing what it sounds like talking outside the window too, but I know that there's nobody out there either. Okay, so I'm going to take the headset off. I'm going to put these Dysonian goggles on. These I also got at the Museum of Tarot. These have the purple lens filter in it that uh, activates your pineal gland and makes you see into other levels of reality. That's what the theory is. And so I'm going to put these on. They are welding goggle frames. I know that's what you expect. Like, they just look like normal welding goggles, but it's all about the lenses. Like... So now I'm just going to look around the room for a minute with these on. 
can see. Now I have the goggles on, but I'm using my headlamp light instead of the room light. But I do have the goggles on and I'm trying to look around through this spectrum. Oh, I wonder if this is the way to do this. I know that it doesn't look like that for you, but as I pan around the room with these goggles on using a flashlight in the dark, uh, I could see how this could make you see into spectrums maybe that you normally would not perceive. just heard something knock in the bathroom. Something just went clunk in the bathroom. Mm. Through that door right there. So I don't know if that bathroom door opens. It's like 4.30 in the morning. I'm not sleeping right now. I did not see the shaman. Um, I decided to fall asleep and see if I had any kind of weird dreams. And basically, well, let me kind of wake up and get ready and I'll tell you what happened. So I practice lucid dreaming and remote viewing and other different forms of mindfulness and meditation. And so last night the experience was as I'm falling asleep in the bed here, feeling like I'm falling out of my body or like I'm trying to float up out of my body all night. And usually I use that as like a launching point to do astral projection or to become aware that like that's happening and I start lucid dreaming. But last night it was like I would just come back to being awake in the bedroom and feel like someone was watching me. And so I would sort of wake up and look over here in this corner of the bedroom. At one point I even got up and came over here and looked around, but I didn't actually see anything. I didn't have even any dreams that I remember. I, I know that I was dreaming at one point, but uh, it doesn't feel like it was anything significant. Like I said, every time I started to dream or realize that I was having that kind of uh, falling through the bed or rolling out of my body kind of sensation, that I felt like uh, I would just come back to my body and sort of open my eyes and look around the room and then not see anything. But I didn't hear any more knocking or tapping or any doors slamming or anything like that. Uh, so we'll see. A lot of people have stayed in this exact room and the one next door and had all kinds of weird experiences where uh, they've encountered this shadow figure or had crazy dreams. People have woke up in the night and gone up and knocked on the owner's door and been like, what's going on? Trying to get an explanation. And people even hear like talking outside and stuff. I had little nuances of that, uh, but it was mostly like on the edge of falling asleep and kind of normal stuff. I didn't have any kind of shaman encounter in here, but uh, I want to come back. I definitely want to come back here and do more research here and down in the settlers. Uh, cabin and today we're going to be doing a lot more uh, outside up and around the petroglyphs flying the drone and a lot of other cool stuff what do you think Odie we're gonna go look for petroglyphs today huh she's the ranch dog she actually likes me but she's kind of skittish about cameras and stuff we've been petting and all that she's a nice little dog but uh, she was a stray that wandered onto the ranch but we're gonna take this cool little rig with Jeff and Adam, and we're gonna go up to where some petroglyphs are and some maybe ancient artifacts and explore it. So we're gonna go for a cool little off-road adventure here, up where a lot of the investigating is was going on with Jacques Vallée and Bob Bigelow and all that. So 
Here we go. Mine's up. <laughs> here we go. Dude, this is awesome. Am I crazy for riding back here? <laughs> Are you gonna go in the back too? Everybody's coming? What? No? Oh, you're getting the dog up. Come on, Odie! Come on! Come on! <laughs> She's so funny. Where are you taking me, Jeff? Places unknown. Places unknown? Places unknown. Okay. This is the newest spot that we've been uh, enjoying. This location has been heavily researched as much, or if not more, and before that, Skinwalker Ranch itself by Bob Bigelow and his entire team, Jacques Vallée, Hal Putoff, all those guys have been up here. And now we are, uh, after doing a bunch of overnight paranormal investigating, we are getting ready to go to some ancient sites potentially where it seems like there could be uh, stuff that hasn't been really investigated that could have artifacts, pottery, arrowheads, uh, uh, evidence of the ancient settlement that could have been part of the research that was done here previously. Here on that point? Yes. Okay. Cool. This isn't really a road. No. <laughs> it's an old road. Adam and Odie are in the back. What's that big? <laughs> Evidence of recent rain? <laughs> Adam! Look to the side! <laughs> <laughs> Yee <-haw. laughs> This is awesome, dude! <laughs> <laughs> we got out to try and film an epic shot like he's gonna drive up this hill and it just won't even come up the hill the whole thing just died so that's it no farther we go okay so on foot it is <laughs> this is all we're allowed <laughs> now Maybe there's something we're supposed to find on foot on the way that hasn't been seen before, you know? Possibly. Definitely. All right. But, you know, as we've been taught, you know, we're meant to find it, we're, we find it. Right. So the truck breaks down. There's no uh, coincidences here. So we'll see. Yeah, look at that. It's like quartz bubbled. And then there's just like another. I found this in the Valley of the Magic Mesa, a small piece, but this is like a huge chunk. Somebody in the comments tell me what this is. Because it almost looks and feels like Moldavite, but it's white. And it's the same thing in southern Utah. But this could just be like a weird piece of quartz again. Yeah. I keep forgetting to turn my external microphone on for the wind. Sorry guys, I'm trying to remember. Look at this, this is like some animal came and slept here and dug around in the dirt like a horse or something that I would really like to eventually hike up there and see what's up at that point on the hill up there as well it looks like we're headed towards this peak where apparently there's a lot of artifacts but interesting geology already around here and don't forget area 51's right over the mountains right there maybe about one hour drive more of this. Look at these crystal rocks. So cool. Just huge chunks of this laying all over the ground up here. Hey, Odie. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Those look stacked. Look at all the other rocks around. None Everything else is just natural stone piled up from this washout, this creek that comes down here when it rains. But then look at this. This is definitely hand placed and you uh, coming up here in your side by side 
have inadvertently, it looks like to me, found a cart path. This looks like a, I mean, it could have been the Spanish coming up here for a mine or even older, but this is all hand placed here, right? If I'm wrong, tell me on the, in the comments, but this does not look like a natural wall right here. Yeah. Yeah, this is all like hand placed. Um, if we could get back up here with the big metal detector, we could probably find some stuff. So that's something to keep in mind for a future day. Next trip. We come up here and metal detect this whole hillside, look for artifacts. We could follow the runoff down a little bit and see if there's anything that's washed down, got stuck, like that could give us any clues. This is the spot that kind of clued you in that there'd be something else up the road yes. here, though? Yep. Okay. From here, we went further. And it's on an, an obvious trail, a path that's going up there. I would say this is a Spanish cart path or a mining trail that somebody put in up here. Yeah, it trails off like right there. any kind of carvings or artifacts, arrowheads, any indication as to who could have built this wall. I really think we need to come back another day and metal detect ground penetrating radar, start looking around, but there's more. You say there's arrowhead flakes and everything further up? Yes. All right, here we go. A lot of charcoal. A lot of charcoal. Lot of charcoal. That would be indicative then if of a mining operation, smelting, so there's a charcoal kiln right by my house too. Really? So these are all probably half a mile away. mining cart paths that date back to the Spanish, at least. That would be my initial guess. Well, it means that there's, they wouldn't put in a wall and a path unless they were hauling stuff that was heavy. Yeah, they wouldn't build a road. They wouldn't need a road unless they were onto it and pulling it out. Once again, we have the same formula or pattern as in these other locations. You've got old abandoned mining operations, minecart paths, oral traditions of different tribes and cultures coming in through these regions to mine for resources, probably enslaving and fighting the local tribes, different things like that. And then if you go way back, you're talking about the legends of the, the giants, the, the, I think they're called the Siteka, the giant people back in primitive times that were doing mines up here. And then the Spanish came through and tried to find it all. So why would they put these big cart paths in and retaining walls unless they're actually hauling something heavy out of here? It's interesting. And why is it always blended with UFOs and the paranormal? Why? Yeah, you're right. This is either a continuation of the road or it looks like this is stacked stones, more, more rocks pile up here. Check this out. Yeah, look at that. Yeah, ha this is hand placed here too. Hand placed stone. burnt soil. Look at the charcoal soil. Giant big bonfire here. It's like there's a path that goes up there. This is like a whole bonfire area. Look at all this charcoal on the ground. I think it would be another spot for metal to test. Oh, yeah. 
and totally another spot to metal detect. Yeah, that's interesting that that looks hand placed and then there's a big bonfire right here. Way too perfect for it not to be hand placed. I mean, it feels super old, 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 too. And then you got a lot of charcoal down there. Yeah. Yeah, look at that. That's totally intentional right there. So we have this whole spot. It almost looks like there was a camp or a teepee that was placed here, people camping, but I can't find any beads or artifacts. It's just that wall. So it could also be indication of like a cart path, like a waypoint, a spot where they had a camp halfway up the hill while they were hauling stuff. If you're hauling carts of gold, you probably couldn't make it down and up in one trip. You probably had to stop a few times. You know what I mean? Oh yeah, you start getting all this jasper and agate. So yeah, then you start getting into the stone tool making. There's just piles and piles of this stuff laying all over. It doesn't look mapped or like, like it was really worked, but there's just, it's like a field of it. Oh, huge boulders of it all over the ground here. Looks like a, that's a wooden structure and piled rocks. All right, what the hell is this? Okay, and now, yeah, and this is built right on tons of this agate. It's all over the ground here. The, it's like just flakes everywhere and then you have this this is like a, a bit, this is a buried rooftop hey this is a mine entrance i think this goes underground right here this is an old 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 entrance hey jeff I think you've got uh, uh, an old mine entrance right here. Hey, look at there's a tin pot right here. A metal, can? A metal can. This is a mine entrance, bro. So that's what we're hoping. That's, that's the true this is it. This is a mine entrance, and right downhill from this is where the fire pit is. And the road comes up here. This is an abandoned mine. See, this is cut. This looks, I can't tell if it's hand chopped or what. This is a mine entrance, my friend, that's been filled in. It probably just goes straight into the mountain. We could bring uh, James Keenan back up here with ground penetrating radar and follow and see exactly which way they went, how deep and which turns they made. Find if there's any deposits. See how the fluff? Look out there. Then. I know. Yeah. Look, this is all uh, spoils tilled up from them mining out. Yeah. So downhill here should be everything that they were digging out. So we could metal detect this. Yeah. Here's their pile, like some of their tailings. Hey, here's more charcoal right here. A whole other burn pit. So they were, this is like, they were smelting and camping here. Abandoned mine right here. That's it, man. This is a mine. That's a mine entrance. I'm pretty sure of that. So I think this is a mine shaft that goes in and then you've got burn spots or camp spots here and there camp spots, maybe they, were smelting. they could have been smelting or um yeah this looks like you've got a tin can though here i've got that one here you did again i've collected it <laughs> oh yeah 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 <laughs> but see you've got agate piled all over this was dug out this is all tailings and this is squared off this was an entrance and this was all 
supposed to be part of the cribbing that goes in. To, be wild if there's a tunnel under? There's, that's that's what I'm saying. We bring James Keenan up here and we could we could follow where it went. Yeah. So I can't say 100% for sure. There's no like definite rock stacks or nothing, but there's like a clear cut path where same size as the trail we were on over yeah. there. Right up here. And it circles right down here. So I mean. And uh, yeah, from here down. So the, uh, what would be interesting would be to scan to see what minerals are underground here. Um, yeah. So he, if he brought the tin can up here, this looks so old and caved in and washed out and the burn pit here, this feels way more primitive of a mine entrance. I mean, look at how it's almost disappeared into the land. Do you have a way to GPS mark this so you know right how to get here or to look online? Because oh. we might be able to Google Earth, you know, and like find other spots just by looking, zooming in and looking yeah, around I can from get here out. Where we are. I, I, we, my son's pinpointed us at like here before. Yeah. Well, I mean, look at this. There's a mine entrance right there. And then there's charcoal burned all over the ground where Jeff is there. And then over to. Man, it's all over. It's pretty obvious to me that this is like a tailings pile that's been dug out of that abandoned mine shaft. The question is, is how old is this mine shaft? And is there more? And why is there more than one spot? You have the hole right there, dug out, obviously man-made, a pile. But I mean, these look really, really old. They look older than Pioneer to me, the way they're worn out. Yeah, they're still mining, you know what I mean? They're yeah. mining. They're mining. Old for old. Oral the oral traditions, though, the mining goes clear back into the mythos. We're talking about the land of the giants, and they were mining and enslaving the natives. So how old are these mines? Is the question. Is yeah, the that's question. Pretty filled in and looks pretty... Uh... I don't know. I mean, you could speculate your mind around it, but until we start metal detecting or find more relics, relics or evidence that date it, more tin cans and digging tools and things, but how many of these spots have you found up here so far? In, in this spot alone, there's at least 10 of those flat spots, but we're going to get to some really primitive metal down here, uh, old hammered chain link chain link stuff and old metal and things yeah. okay well this will give us a better clue as to what was going on then it's hard to tell What's if any of this is placed or not this is what i think they made them or something oh This, this is the one. So this is the, these are the odd pieces that you find. Let's, what is that? It's almost like a petrified charcoal in a weird say, way. Is it, even, is it even stone? It has like crystal in it though. Yep. So remember, this goes with that conglomerate that's up there. It looks like concrete. Yeah. Well, that, that's again, this is just your spot. Yeah. I'll bring this piece back so we can check it out. Maybe. It's like they were working the land and working this uh, creek bed. They were guiding the flow of this down and probably using it, using the water. Because this all looks like it was thrown here. It's so hard to know some of this. It looks if it if it was it was a long time ago. Yeah, how intentional is all this? Like they're guiding the water down. Is it like, is it coal? Is that like a huge lump of coal out of a mine? Did they haul coal into smelt possibly? Into smelt? Oh yeah, all the burn piles. Were they using this? Maybe that fell off the cart or something. Uh, now this is really interesting. Check this out. Here we've been following this cart path up and then we've got these stacked stones and I do not think that these are recent. I definitely think they're not recent. A lot of intriguing stuff up here. This entire 
valley is like a ring. There's, uh, it looks like different flakes. There's all kinds of agate and stuff around here that could have been used for that. We come up here and there's this whole stacked rock pile. And I'm not the first one, or we aren't the first ones to find this. Here's an old tin can, like tobacco can or something laying here. Oh, and now I'm getting low battery warnings and stuff on my phone right as I stand close to this. So we have this stacked rock here. The question is, if it gives a line of sight to anything, if we look through the cracks or if it's just stacked rock, right? If I had to say it pointed to anything, I would say to something up there. Are you seeing uh, the different colored rocks stand out with the Dysonian goggles on? Exactly. Really? Yeah. You're literally sitting in a mine hole. This is a, an abandoned mine shaft that you're chilling in right there, Adam. That's pretty cool. Yeah. I mean, every I think everyone should look at everything from here because it's, it's just like yeah, perspective this is, is incredible. A, a log cabin syrup yeah, can. It really is cool. From the pioneer days. This is an old mine sitting in down here. And you can see how it's been all dug out. And I think that they were chasing this quartz vein probably for gold or copper. Do you have you been wearing those for a yes, second? Yes, I just had them on that whole time there, and that definitely is another perspective for sure. That's one of the other things is supposedly part of the idea of remote viewing and the goggles and using different equipment was you could see energetic glowing areas in the hillside where there's gold or minerals and there's been stories of people that have even been like abducted or kidnapped by like cartels and organizations just to go look with their field of vision for like glowing patches in the forest for gold and weird yeah. stuff but yeah so it makes you wonder that's kind of why i play with those goggles and stuff yeah, too it's because you just you never, never know, know what you might bump into never know and last night in the in the bedroom with the uh with the shaman ghost, I put the goggles on and used the flashlight around and over in the corner where I kept feeling like something was looking at me. It was like there was uh, dark smudgy stuff moving around on the other side of the bed when I was wearing the goggles. But I did film that and you were saying, dude, that you had the same thing while you were sleeping last night, feeling like you couldn't fall asleep or relax or... Like somebody was staring over the top of me watching me. Like you were being watched all night. Mm -hmm. Yeah, me too, man. Like wake uh, up every, I don't know, 15 to 20, maybe 30 minutes of solid sleep, and then that was it. But And then I only slept for maybe at the most three hours. Right. Yeah, me but too. I but felt, you feel I great, right? Today. Yeah. Yeah, I feel amazing too. But same thing. I felt like all night I was just like, I felt like I was about to fall off the bed or like go out of body. And then I would wake up and feel like somebody was staring at me, but there was just nothing there. Yeah. So, and I've never had yeah. slipping, falling off the bridge. Yeah, yeah, it feels like somebody's pushing you out of the back of a chair and then you wake up and then there's nobody in the room and it feels like somebody's watching you. So, yeah, weird stuff, man. So I did try those goggles last night. Oh, yeah, look at that. Huge chunk. I mean, they had to have been seeing this on the ground or this is tailings from what they dug out underground. Like this could be part of what... This probably got thrown out of the hole. This is the big, a big mine entrance. Okay, so this is attempt two and three to chase the same thing up there. So they're 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 triangulating down on, into something, or they're looking for a treasure cache. A treasure? Oh, what what do you call it? A treasure cache. Okay. A bunch of furry if they dead. if they thought That's something dead. was under this mound or under this hill. Oh, look at this, guys. Okay, this is an, yeah, this is an abandoned mine shaft. Abandoned mine shaft. Look, come up the hill and look at this hole in the rocks. There it is. That's what you're talking about. Yeah. Look at this hole in the rocks. Look at this. This is, this is significant, guys. Look at this. Wow, what the heck? Yeah, holy smokes. 
And now we're back up on top of the mine. You crawled through that, Adam? If I remember right, I did. I could, because I had, yeah, I know it I did. It was good. It was good. Oh, yeah. It's a good spot. It opens up to a really neat spot on the other side. It's wow. easily gone through. Don't smash my head. Okay. Okay. I'm still here and I already want to come back and keep exploring because this is crazy. This is, uh, there's got to be artifacts, pottery, arrowheads, mining operations. I mean, three mine shafts right over here on the other side of the hill. One, two, three. And then this whole like iconic sight hole tunnel right here. <laughs> there's the dog coming through. Hey, Odie. She's a cool dog. My dad had a dog named Odie that looked like a chocolate version of her. Uh, and we immediately became best friends. Okay. Fascinating. I'm almost interested in if there's a marking on top up here. Hi, Odie. Don't fall. This is... <laughs> your perch that you were looking to go to before? See straight ahead. You got that nice clear bluff up there yep. for real i'm telling you that line of sight is like looking down the barrel of a gun and i i was drawn i was saying on the way up here i was like we should walk up and look on the top of that um i wouldn't be surprised if there's stuff up there as far as i'm concerned so yeah you're right there's a there's a whole city going on down below in this crevice right here yeah, because it looks like line of sight through all of this stuff. You've got that hilltop over there straight ahead that feels very intriguing. And then line of sight this way. Huge, it's hard to see, huge boulder right in the middle. And then it goes uphill to a bunch of what looks like pocket caves and stuff everywhere. Hey, look at, look at the mountain over there all dug out. See that big white spot on the mountain there? We've, we've been through that. Yeah, it's not balanced as it looks like it is. Really? Yeah, it's almost like a concrete float. Oh, oh okay. Yeah. So, one spot we didn't go to, and I don't know if you can see it from there, but there's another spot right up here on the hillside. It's totally different color. Uh, the orange colored trees are, yeah, signs, signs of a uh, mineral deposit underground for sure. Here's a whole tin jug thing. Mine entrance. Mine entrance. What were they after? There's something underground. And these are old. Ouch. <laughs> See? Look at that. Abandoned mine shafts here. Burning. Look, charcoal in the ground. Abandoned mine shaft. Nowhere is this recorded. There's no record of any of this anywhere? None that I have found to date. Right. Even Adam didn't know about it. If there's stuff burned. See how the ground's all burned right by your feet there? Yeah. Mine shaft. Mine shaft, and then where we were just sitting in the holes right over there, the stacked rocks right over there. It's all centralized around this big sight glass and the rocks right up there. We need to ground penetrating radar this and see which way it goes and see how deep and then go get it. That's like old, like a, from a jug or something. Yeah, look, this is stacked rock. These are like posts put in. And this is like strapping on the tree. 
Look at how old these nails are. Look, these are square, square nails with, with flat uh, pounded rose heads. These are handmade nails, hand forged nails. Here you've got all this evidence of tin cans. Look at this pure like white quartz crystal right where all this mining operation stuff is. Come over here and it's just like you can tell people were living here and the whole ground is just covered in charcoal. Like there was a whole camp here, man. Huge burn areas. You're, you're about to burn everything. Everything just on fire. Like, what? Why? This whole area is on fire. All right by these mine shafts and stuff up here. And let's not forget that this area was like researched by Bigelow, Jacques Vallée, all the remote viewers. Oh man. Look at how burnt this rock is. It was also researched for the MX Missile Project. The MX Missile Project, they came up here. Yeah. There's been a lot of people. But... Weird, guys. They either got missed or it wasn't worth Yeah, charcoal everywhere. Yeah, you can tell where just people have been here, man. Mm -hmm. Stuff piled up, trees are, yeah, this is chopped, sawed. Yeah. And then this whole mountainside is like burned. What were they doing? Or did a campfire get out of hand and they were like, run away, <laughs> you know? Did they, they accidentally caught the whole mountain on fire, had to bail out, who knows? I'm really fascinated to see what we find if we come up and start doing ground penetrating radar and analysis underground where those cave, those uh, mine entrances are, man. They, they, who knows what they were looking for there? Could be anything. Yeah, this is leveled. A leveled area. All burnt on top. Like another one of those spots, just like we were at before. Like you feel like there was a teepee or a cabin or something here, or a big campfire, and then the trail going down. That's a road going down. That's a, is that another mine right there? It's like another sinkhole. There's stacked rocks. More rocks piled up. Oh man. I mean, we could scour over all of this looking for arrowheads and artifacts and everything. I'm trying to look, but right. We need my big metal detector, and ground penetrating stuff. There could be a cache or something buried here, but. Hmm. <laughs> Look at those. Those are monsters. Look at those. Nice. Those are some big old sheds, man. Wow. Mm -hmm. What do you think, Odie? Ooh, yum, yum. Whoa! She's gonna teach her to collect those. Yeah, that's a good girl. Oh. That's a good girl. Go get more. Go find more. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Nice choice to go for an alternate walk to the big boulder. Yeah, man. We're gonna go check out the boulder that we we oh, think yeah, the uh, he's yeah a big fighter. He was. Yeah. All right. This is awesome, dude. We're gonna have to think Oh, you got the die sign and goggles now still. I have to go to work. <laughs> now you gotta pack them out, dude. Oh. Those are gonna look awesome somewhere in the saloon or something to commemorate this first expedition on the trip. Thank you very much. We have hiked way up this hill. 
trying to find that boulder, that huge boulder that we spotted. And then we noticed lying aside up here on the top of the ridge, some big old caves. I mean, I would guess that if we we're gonna find petroglyphs, it's gonna be up there where those caves are, around those rock formations and along the ridge top there to the right. Yeah, Did you hear the, right. yeah, she's keying off on something. You, you saw a rabbit? Yes, a little cotton tail. Oh, okay, she's chasing rabbits. She's on her, on her chase. <laughs> Ah, here it is. This is the big boulder we were looking for. Made of the same type of rock as the one with the big hole in it. Look at how this is split in the back. Now you gotta be careful, there's no mountain lions or anything in here. Well, I was hoping to find some kind of carvings or a cache, markings of some sort, but it just looks like a big rock. And a white spot in the mountain above. Big old rock and then a weird markings and holes, caves all over further uphill. I don't see anything here around this though. Interesting. Yeah. It really is like there's a road that goes all the way down through here, man. And it follows right along where the water goes down. Uh, this whole mining operation and who knows how long ago this was all done. It feels very, very old, even though it looks like a more recent group has come back up here and fooled around trying to get it whatever used to be here that was a lot older. You know the one that gets me is that one with the triangular rooftop that's just like forgotten. That looks so old to me. I I don't know. It's bizarre, man. You have a very interesting spot. This is every bit as fascinating and has as much to <laughs> look into as the Uinta Basin. I've been all over Skinwalker Ranch, the Uinta Basin, and, and from here, oh yeah, look at this. We're on, the, we're on the edge of that formation, huh? Yeah. So the mines we just walked by. Should be right there. Yep. Tin can in the hand, <laughs> right? This is crazy. There's more stuff here, and more stuff has gone on here, it seems, than I've found at Blind Frog Ranch and up around Skinwalker Ranch, except for there's been well, I guess not. There hasn't been more government research. There was the whole missile program that came up through here. Bigelow came up through here. There's, they did the whole close encounters the of the third kind railway. stuff. The underground, the what? The underground yeah. railway. Yeah, we haven't even talked about that and how this all ties into Area 51. I don't know. This is backfilled in, dude. This is cave entrance. This looks so much like the Indian burial ground at Blind Frog Ranch. It looks so similar. If this got dug out up here, this has been filled in with boulders and soft dirt all piled up here. I bet if we dug out here, this is a, probably another ancient cave entrance. Uh, it would be worth coming up here and metal detecting and sifting for beads and stuff and artifacts. <laughs> we made it back to the truck. And it does not even want to come up this little hill. <laughs> we're going to have to walk all the way out off the mountain. That's where we were. It was way up there. Punch it, Chewy! <laughs> Ah! <laughs> Gotta get hydrated, Odie, before we do the long hike back. Yeah. We gotta do it on foot now. <laughs> Ain't got no gas. <laughs> I don't know what's wrong with it. I don't know what's wrong with it. 
ain't got no gas. Ain't no got no gas in it. How did we get gas all of a sudden? I don't know. <laughs> yeah, we're back in business. <laughs> Hey, thanks so much for bringing me up here and introducing me to your place. This has been an amazing trip so far. I Thank appreciate you it. Thank you for coming. And allowing me to introduce this place to the world. Everybody needs to know about it, man. Uh, it's about time. It's about time, I agree. It's about time. Can't keep this thing a secret for ourselves forever. I agree. <laughs> Does this thing have brakes? <laughs> I hope so. I felt like we didn't have brakes for a second. <laughs> Stay on! We got it on the road, yeah! <laughs> we made it! Mini truck, if you only knew the history of mini truck. Mini truck for the win. The sickest thing is mini truck always gets us home. Mini truck needs its own t-shirt. There you go. <laughs> Until a few days ago, I had no idea that the Mount Wilson Ranch even existed. That it had any connections to do with Bob Bigelow, Hal Putoff, any of the uh, NIDS team that was heavily involved in Skinwalker Ranch. I had no idea that there was reports of a ghost shaman figure that would appear in this room and open and close doors, knock on the ceiling and the walls. I had no idea that Jacques Vallée came up here and actually did experiments, just like in Close Encounters of the Third Kind, right up on Mount Wilson, directly up ahead where you see in the distance where they did lights and audio frequency experiments. And they also hauled truckloads of archeological evidence out of here. It's gonna be amazing. We have a lot more to do. Obviously, this place is incredibly rich with a lot of research to do and so much more to come. Thanks for watching you guys. We'll see you guys in the next one.